All right, guys, welcome to the Clack Shack, and we got a little something different tonight. Uh, most of y'all may know that I've, I've never had an air, air assist on my machine. And just to give you an idea, uh, I'm not brand new with this laser. These are my scrap sheets that, these are, these are the pieces of, of material that I still have left that have, uh, they have some good use left out of them for smaller things like keychains and stuff like that. This is not including the amount of scrap that I've generated that wound up going into the burn pile because it was just so much space eaten up that I couldn't get anything else out of it. So before you say anything, uh, this is what, I've, I've been cutting these without an air assist and uh, it's, I, I've been happy with it, but I've been hearing all the hype about the air assist and people saying you can't cut without an air assist and you can't engrave and you get some more smoke damage with without it. So I have finally broke down and ordered one and it arrived today. And so if you'll stick around for a few minutes, I'm gonna bring you along from the time I opened this box, cause I don't even know what's in here yet, but from the time I opened this box until we start burning again, and I'm gonna give you my honest opinion of what I think, if it makes a difference, how much of a difference it makes, I did decide to go with the X-Tool version, and the reason being is because I just think that if they built the machine, I like the way the machine works, I figured I'd give them an opportunity with the, with the Air Assist instead of going with some other other brand of, of Air Assist. So that was my personal preference. Yours may be different, but if you want to see how this unfolds, then uh, stick around for a few minutes. Let's see what we got here. And I know I've heard some people having horror stories about, you know, parts missing or stuff not getting dropped off. I will add one thing. I ordered the honeycomb at the same time I ordered the air assist. I got the air assist, but I didn't get the honeycomb. And at first I thought maybe it was a mistake, but then once I thought into it for a few more minutes, I realized that I think the honeycomb is still technically on a pre-order basis. And I don't think those have shipped out yet. So before we start bashing next to I'm gonna wait and see, but I, I, I'm pretty sure that's what it is, is this thing was off of pre-order only and the uh, honeycomb is still pre-ordered. So they went ahead and shipped this to me, which I appreciate because I wanted to go ahead and get it and get it working. I've actually got a job that I want to do tonight and I'm gonna try this guy out on it. So. Let's see what we got in the box here. I'm gonna move all this out of the way. Like I said, you can see, I mean, it, it has a, this is 4.5 millimeter Luon uh, underlayment, they call it. Uh, it's used, the hardware stores carry it. They use it to put underneath tile and when you're putting tile in the houses and stuff. The problem you have to watch for is you get these knots and some uh, little Bondo stuff in them from time to time. But for 25 to $30 for a four by eight sheet, which gives me I don't know, 12 of these for 30 bucks. I usually just take my chances. I try to hand pick my pieces. And then when I get them home, I rip them up on the, on the table saw and it's 16 by 16. So that's what typically I cut. So this, this should help me out a lot. So let's see what we got here. Let's see if I can get into it. Okay, there we go. All right, I got a book. Hopefully I've watched enough videos about this thing that I won't need the book. Uh, hmm. Not real sure what's in here. Okay, this looks like the hose. All right, so I got a hose. I got some of that tape that everybody talks about. Uh, I do have both couplers in here. I've got the piece that goes on the top of the uh, unit to hold the hose couple of screws and uh, yeah two two small screws and two large screws a couple of allen wrenches so from what I can recall from watching all these videos it looks like I have all the parts so so far and I got a nozzle I've seen some of them say that it came with two nozzles this one Apparently has one that I found so far. Unless I'm overlooking it. 
Bill. All right, and then this appears to be the last pieces, which is the compressor. And it has a, a little rubber feet. That'll be good, keep down vibration. That's nice. And I do have a shield to go with it with a hole already in it. So that's good. Saves me having to cut a hole, plus I'll have an extra shield. If I were to break this one, I'll just drill a hole with that one. So that works. Uh, and I know there's been some debate on whether it had a switch or not. This one does have the switch on the cord, which my plan is to take my, uh, the switch that controls my vacuum table that I flip, you see me flip it on the front of my table right there all the time. My plan is I'm gonna have this wired into a plug. The same switch will operate both my vacuum table and my air assist. Uh, so I'll be able to just flip that one switch that I'm, I've gotten accustomed to and it'll turn everything on. So that's the plan for that. Now, I'm probably gonna have to install that switch. I don't know if I'll do that tonight, but, or in, install the plug rather. I've got the switch, I just don't have a plug. But I'm pretty sure I got some plugs and some wire and everything here in the shop somewhere in my my electrical box, but I don't know if that's something I want to do tonight. That may be a weekend project. Or I may run it like this with the switch for a few days until I get used to it and decide whether I like it and then go from there. All right, the good news is the uh, core's at least six foot long, so that'll give me plenty of room to replacement. And I'm gonna have to find a little cubby to sit this in or somewhere to put this out of the way. Uh, so we got that. And I'm just gonna double check and make sure I haven't overlooked anything in the box. And I have not. So I am going to put all of the packaging materials back in the box. And we're gonna get to work putting this thing together. Like I said, I've watched a lot of the videos, so I'm hoping I got this figured out. It doesn't appear to be that challenging, so it shouldn't take but a few minutes to have this thing on and have it cut. And uh, hopefully the sun will get a little lower and it'll cool down a little bit. It is currently 85 degrees. No, oh, wait a minute. It's currently 89 degrees here in the clap shack. So if y'all see me sweating, I'm not about to have a heart attack. It's 89 degrees in here. Uh, this place has been locked up all day. I've been at work, just got home. I got my big fan going, trying to get some air in here. And I had to turn the small one off because I didn't want y'all to have to hear the humming from the small fan. So one day I will have air conditioning out here. I have heat for the winter time, but no AC yet. So I'm gonna get the parts unpackaged and reposition the camera where you can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna go ahead and try to get this stuff put together. All right, guys, for step one, uh, everything that I have read and everything that I have seen, I'm gonna have to have this off. Uh, my machine's due for a good cleaning anyway. So I'm gonna pull everything, break, break everything down and take the laser head off and then we're going to take it over. I'm going to get the lens changed out, get everything put in it, bring it back, and then I'll mount the compressor over here or put the compressor over here, figure out how I'm going to do this hose, and uh, put the head back on. So I'm just going to take the head off right quick, uh, pull up on my, my little adjustment lever there, and it comes right out. The one thing that I do know is that these little cables right here can be brittle. Uh, if you notice, I put a little heat shrink on mine some time ago when I first got my machine to try to keep that uh, joint right there from, from bending a whole lot in the event that I need to take it off. I avoid taking this thing loose as much as I can, but for this, we're going to have to take this loose. Um, so you just got to press the, the little re lock and release there and kind of give it a little gentle tug. Uh, one thing that I do like to do is to try to get to where I can push on the plastic instead of pulling on the wires with the ends of my thumb because it's a little tight in there and you don't want to mess these wires up. So let's try to do this without messing the wires up. And 
and then I'm just going to gently slide this thing to the side until it comes out. Uh, a little bit of a hang right there. All right, horse flies are out again today, guys. Uh, one thing that for, for any of you that, that maybe just received your machine and you're not put it together yet, one thing that I will recommend because I had saw some horror stories about the wires getting cut by this little piece here. Uh, what I did when I first got mine before I even put this thing together was I took me some sandpaper and you can maybe see the edges of that, but I took me some sandpaper and folded it up and more or less just flossed inside there to make sure I got any kind of sharp edges. Uh, because this is uh, stamped metal from the best I can tell and anytime you stamp metal if it's the blade isn't really sharp on the machine doing the stamping you'll get those little razor blade edges on the back side of that stamped material and if it sits there and moves back and forth it's, it's kind of like you got a knife just sitting there easing against it for a while and it will cut those wires and so that was one thing that I wanted to make sure didn't happen with mine so before I even put it together I just took me some sandpaper. It didn't, it didn't hurt it. You can't tell I did it unless you look really carefully. And I just kind of flossed this area and just, just, just sanded it down and got it really smooth. And I used my fingernail to kind of check and make sure I didn't have any little, little lips or sharp edges there. So if you haven't put yours together, you know, you might want to consider doing that uh, just to make sure, at least, at least check and make sure you don't have any sharp edges. If you don't have sharp edges, then you should be good. But my cable's been on here now for eight months and i haven't had a problem with it so i'm going to take this and we're going to go over to the table so i can attach everything that's going to be attached to here i'm going to be repositioning and hang on a minute got somebody wants to say hey hey guys give me just a second i've got to feed my birds They've got a taste for uh, cat food. So I'll set you guys over here. Oh, look. Cats like cat food too. That'd be Fluffy. Uh, her job is to keep the mice from eating the laser. All right, let me get my stool. Custom built here at the Clack Shack. All right, so we got the compressor, we got the nozzle, and you know what I left laying over there? The one piece I gotta have. And I've got the laser head. And man, this lens is dirty. I told y'all last night when I was working on the iPad that it was dirty, need clean. I wasn't lying. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna dump everything here on my, my handy little rug. Uh, this was actually a rug that my wife, it got a stain on it and she didn't want to use it. So I brought it out here to use for sanding and such. It makes it a little easier. I'm OCD for those of you that don't know. So I'm going to be organizing the parts so that I can find them. I will not be reusing this bag. I've already got a box that I keep all my X-Tool tools in, so I'm just gonna kind of split this bag open because my hands were not built to unzip these little bags. So I'm more adapted to just rip them open. So there we go. Those are the two screws that are gonna go in the top here to replace uh, the two screws for this piece. And then these are the two screws well, what are these two screws for? Somebody help me out here. Uh, not certain. I'm gonna get those instructions out because I was thinking there was only two screws, unless, unless I have to, huh, that's a really good question. Never throw the instructions away until after you've got it put together at least. All right, so we're doing those two big screws. The two big screws do go in the top. Okay, that is going to be the screws for the nozzle. It has two screws, so 
Okay, now it all makes sense to me. I forgot about it needed screws for that. So, first thing here, I'm gonna take this little cover off. And I, I, word of advice, this these little screws right here, don't over tighten those when you put those in. It doesn't take much to hold this little cover on. So I'm gonna lay that one over to the side. We won't be using it. And while I've got this off, I'm gonna go take the air hose and get all the dust out of this right quick. I'll be right back. And I'm gonna use my little uh, Allen wrench here to keep the fan from just continually spinning. And what I try to do is just try to get a look, get as much of that dust and stuff out as I can. And I know a lot of you guys reach up in here with a Q-tip and mess with that lens or that uh, the laser inside there, but I prefer not to do that. Mine does not have the, the, the cracking lens that everybody has. You can look down inside there and there's nothing all the way back to that uh, round looking lens on the laser. So I don't mess with that. It hadn't failed me in eight months. I'm not reaching anything up in there. Uh, I do look and make sure it doesn't have any dust on it, and I, I can't see any dust, so we're leaving that alone. All right, so the next step is I gotta figure out how to get this guy on here. Yes, that is much bigger. Woo. Okay, I, I'm not a fan of the tape, but it looks like that's what we're gonna be doing today. I'm gonna get some alcohol to clean this part of the metal because I'm afraid if I put the tape on there without cleaning that metal first, that it's not gonna stick. And I also wanna go ahead and clean these. So let me get my alcohol and a rag right here. And I think you can see it in the video, but the birds came back to eat. They, uh, they like to hang with me when I'm out here sometimes. Mostly anytime I'm out here, they come hang. And while I'm doing this, I'm pretty sure you can see the uh, my photo wall that I'm working on for our, our local peach jam that we got coming up. We gotta get that thing done by the end of June, which is mostly done. I'm gonna do a few more cosmetic things to it. And I'm thinking about adding some uh, wheels to it to be able to move it from place to place a little easier. But pretty much, I've got that thing done. I just gotta get it loaded on my trailer, but I'm gonna put some wheels on it before I do that. All right. I'm gonna call that clean. So now, I've gotta figure out exactly how much of this thread tape it's gonna take. And this is really gonna mess with my OCD. The tape is bigger than the, uh, the tape is bigger than the, the little nozzle. That's gonna be an issue I'm gonna have to address. All right, does it say how many wraps of tape? No, no it does not. So I'm going to wrap it, we'll say three wraps and then we'll try it. Need to hit that with a wet rock. Mm, not a fan of that, guys. All right, it's got to have more. I can tell you now, I will not be putting this back together until I trim this tape to where it is not protruding past the end of the brass uh, part of this. I, I just I will not be doing that because it looks to me as though that could stand to uh, get in the wrong place and cause some issues or at best cause some airflow issues so I will be trimming that part with a razor it 
Let me go ahead and get a razor. I'm gonna need one in a minute anyway. My knife's a little dull. This is my work knife. Mostly use it to pick pieces out if I need to. Still wobbly. Oh. I would rather, I got a buddy who's got a machine shop. I may end up with a uh, aluminum sleeve before this is said and done. I mean, I'm not doubting that this works. Uh, it just seems, this seems like something that a redneck like myself would come up with. One less OCD than me. I, it really didn't. I mean, it, it, it really doesn't seem like the best approach. No offense to whoever came up with this idea. Uh, like I said, you know, here in the South, we're a fan of duct tape, but there's some places that my personal preference is tape is not the answer. And this is probably one of them. So I'm going to do it because that's what they say to do. But not real thrilled about it. But like I said, I can respect it because, uh, like I said, here in the South, we make do. We develop things to fix problems. So, I mean, I, I appreciate the, uh, I respect the, the problem solving that went into this, but not the final product. This seems like more of one of those roadside repairs that you would do, you know, duct tape for your radiator hose to just to get you to the gas station. All right. All right, I'm just pressing this in really tight to make sure that I got it tight enough that it doesn't allow this to wobble because I can see one potential issue is if you don't put enough of this tape on there, when you tighten those screws, the purpose of this tape is gonna be to space this thing into the center. And by using tape, every time you make a round around it, the whole, the, the, the piece gets larger. So if you only put a space on one side or the other, that's gonna get this, this center point. It, it'll be out of alignment with the laser itself, and that could be highly problematic. So I wanna use as much tape as I have to to make it tight, and it's still not quite as tight as I'd like for it to be. So I'm gonna go around it with one more, one more layer of tape. And I apologize that I did not keep count of how many I went. For those of you that may have to do this in the future, but just, you know, just gauge it. It looks like they gave you a substantial amount of the tape, so it looks like there's enough to do it two or three times if you were to screw it up. Okay, now I think I'm happy with that. It's not so tight that I've got to that I've got to uh, force it on there, but you kind of got to rock it a little bit. So let me see if this is gonna. I'm gonna put it on there, make sure it's good and snug, and I'm gonna pull it back off to make sure it's not bunching anywhere on me. Cause you don't want this to bunch. Like I said, if it bunches on one side or the other, it seems to me that could cause a problem with this thing not being perfectly centered. And it's kind of like, not that I know anything about it guys, but if you ever cross threaded a suppressor or not had your suppressor secured on your weapon and you have a baffle strike and you really don't want a baffle strike in here cause that would do bad things for your, uh, your laser. And my OCD is not going to allow me to leave this little wad of tape right there because the potential for that to get pushed over and cause an issue or just sit there and collect dust and cause an issue is way too high. And I understand that the purpose of the tape is just to space that out to fit this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my little light, my razor knife here and I'm gonna cut this stuff just both, just right below the, the top edge of that brass fitting. 
And the way I'm gonna figure out where that is, is I'm just gonna kind of press this in. And if you push it in like that, you can, it, it'll kind of reveal to you where the edge is. And I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna very carefully, this may take me a minute, but very carefully, I'm just gonna go around and I'm gonna cut this stuff down to the metal so that I can peel that outer layer off. Now I like the looks of that a lot better. So now I don't have all that excess material to have a chance to either collect a lot of dust down, down uh, stream from the laser and I don't have to worry about it getting bunched in there. So that to me looks a lot better than just putting it on there and going. So the next thing that we gotta do is I gotta figure out which side this is supposed to come in. And so the layers are sits here, so the hole should be over here. There we go. All right, and then this piece is going to go here. Okay. I'm a visual guy. I have to see it to kind of put everything together. All right. Now. All right. So the X tool, I keep, I keep getting the air assist mixed up. The X tool air assist, I was thinking it comes out on this side, but I forgot that's a couple of other models. The X tool air assist actually comes out on the right side. It's got a flat edge right here that appears that flat edge is supposed to be used to kind of line things up and make sure that the nozzle doesn't hit the shield. So I'm trying to line it up with the back of the, the front of the laser here. Horse fly. Got him. They just keep coming. All right, so now I need to get the two screws for securing the little top here. And I know there's two screws in this thing because I saw them. There we go. Now, I'm not going to go crazy tightening these. I'm going to tighten these just, just enough to where I feel I'm digging into that dig it into that tape if the tape does what it's supposed to do and like I said take it from a redneck you can fix a lot of things with tape so now I'm going to go and get the other one in I'm just going to like I said I'm just snugging those down until I feel it dig into the tape a little bit I've gotten mine so precise that it would probably stay on without any without any screws but I'm just going to twist that down just until I feel a, a, a substantial amount of pressure on that. Kind of rock it a little. Not going to go crazy over tightening those. So I think that's going to be adequate. That tape should have a little give to it and kind of act like a uh, lock nut on the back side of that. So got that part on there. And... Now we gotta get this guy on. And you gotta make sure when you put this on there, you wanna make sure that your hole goes all the way into the into the machine. So that would that would be terrible to try to do that without it. Okay, the shield's not gonna do a whole lot of good now. I'm just gonna be honest with you. The laser's not even exposed until after it gets out of the shield. So if I've got this on there, the laser, I mean, I guess if I'm standing here, maybe it would help. But 
the air assist nozzle actually sticks down below the laser so i don't know that this is going to be a whole lot of benefit but it's not like i'm gonna be able to let my laser down any lower because this will hit before the cover does so i'm going back together with it on there and i'm just going to tighten these like i said these you do not want to over tighten either when you when you feel that thing touch give it maybe like another little quarter of a turn and stop because all it really has to do is just barely scratch the tip of it into the into the plastic to hold that in there. If you over tighten that, you're gonna break it. So that works. Now for this guy. Okay, so this has got an O-ring, it appears. So I guess I need any thread tape or anything for that. Okay. The cover is kind of preventing me from turning it a little bit, so I'm gonna back this cover back out before I put too much pressure on it and break it. Once I get it adjusted, it'll probably be okay, but trying to turn this thing, the, uh, the hex part of it is hitting the cover a little bit. I don't wanna cross thread it, and I don't want to uh, break the cover, so I'm still kind of try to get that cover out of the, out of the way. There we go. All right. They did not include a wrench for this. I guess they don't want it too tight. But from my dealings with uh, pneumatic tools as well as hydraulics, it's gonna need to be snug enough to uh, make that o-ring seal and not to and i don't want it so loose that this turns with less force than this turns because then every time you turn that that's going to get loose you're going to have an air leak and you're not going to have the desired pressure in there so i'm just tightening that a little bit to make sure that it doesn't un untwist when i turn this and that looks like that part is together so I'm gonna make sure that this is in there far enough to hold and tighten these little screws back down just enough to hold the cover. The cover's not gonna fall off now, not all the way anyway because of the, uh, the hose connector going through it. So that looks that. And that appears to be a shark bite fitting kind of like a shark bite fitting for any of you guys that mess with plumbing so looks like you just insert hose and it's done okay uh, now we got to take these off and replace them with these guys and they're Phillips head so <laughs> Got a little chrome for the X1, or the D1. From my knowledge of watching my videos, I do know that this little rubber hose here, who cut that? This little hose here goes on this end. Alright guys, 
Oh yeah, be right back. I gotta get a redneck hose clamp. And for those of y'all that uh, didn't know, if you keep some of these in your uh, toolbox, they will also work really well for uh, attaching uh, fuel lines if you have a fuel line clamp come loose. And they're really great for lawnmowers if you need to put a fuel line on a lawnmower. They work really great for that. And it's just a simple zip tie. But I know if I don't put something on that, that's going to pop off. So put me a little zip tie clamp on that. All right, and here I'm gonna leave just enough gap between the two pieces so that this has a little swivel because it appears that that's just kind of an adapter slash swivel. So I'm gonna leave me just a little bit of room for that to swivel. And another one of my little handy hose clamps. But that guy's not coming out. So, all we have now left to do is put this back on, place this, and snap the hose in and figure out how in the heck we're going to keep this from being a hot mess. Uh, I will be retaining those two screws and these Allen wrenches in my X-Tool toolbox. So give me just a minute. I'm going to move everything over and we'll get started on the last few steps. Back at the old X tool. I just so happen to have a little spot behind my laptop right here beside where I keep my uh, rotary that is appears to be just the right size for this guy. So what I'm gonna do, first thing is I wanna check this, make sure it works before we get too crazy. And just kinda get an idea how much air it's putting out. That'd be kinda nice to know. That's really not a whole lot of air. But I'm guessing that is, uh, that's what it takes. I do got the switch, so that's good. I had actually considered hooking it up to my air compressor because I have a large air compressor, but like I said, I just decided I'd try their equipment out, see how it works. I'm happy with the laser, so we'll go from there. All right, so before I get this thing over here where I can't get to it, I am going to insert the hose and like I said, this looks like remarkably like the design of a shark bite fitting. So I'm just going to mash that in until it quit. It should click at least once. It kind of felt like it had a little bit of a give and then a click. And once you get that click, there's some teeth in here that should have grabbed that wire. And I'm just going to give it a little tug test. Kind of try to tug it and twist it a little bit just to make sure it's seated good so it won't pop out. Uh, same approach with the shark bite fittings. If you've ever had to replace your hot water heater or repair your uh, plumbing so now I've got a mess of cables and stuff I got to do something with uh, y'all all know I'm OCD seriously so I got to do something with this bear with me this will be going under the table on the switch that's happening all right So, the hose is going to be an issue keeping it from trying to coil. From all my years of messing with hoses, I know that's going to be a problem. We'll figure that out in a minute. So now, you got to go back with the, uh, with the laser head. So I'm going to flip this thing over so I don't put too much pressure on my wires. Slide that into the locking, the little uh catch there 
and I gotta kind of bend this down just a little bit to get it in there. I got it pushed in there and I'm just going to make sure that that little clip is actually clipped over the ledge there that it catches on and it is so I'm good I'm going to go back with my head yep that's handy you know what before I put this back together I don't know that I've ever seen anybody else do this. This may just be a clack thing, but a little bit of this grease on this rail right here, or any kind of lubrication goes a long way. There you go. So another little tip for you. Uh, that's one more greasing point that I use because it makes this thing it, it slides up and down much more freely if it's got a little bit of a lubricant on it and you can use graphite you can use this stuff you can use whatever but i just until that runs out i'm using that so all right and now i've got to get this uh hose to go through this hole and then i'm going to lock it into this one and i'm going to support that while i'm pressing it in and it went in there probably close to a half inch before it actually snapped, so. And it's tight. Not digging the setup here with the cables and such. Let me, let me figure out how I'm doing this. I did test it. You can press in on the blue ring on that one and it's a pop out. So that worked. So this, I am going to piggyback off of my existing cabling. Uh, being of formerly of an IT blood related background, I do not do well with nasty looking uh, nasty looking cabling. So let me go get some more uh, ties. Okay, two birds, one stone. Not a fan so far. Not a fan at all of this part. But you know what? I think it'll work.
All right, all I'm doing is I am piggybacking with this other cable all the way until it comes outside my uh, vacuum table here. The only concern that I have is I don't want this hose putting too much pressure on that uh, on that connector right there that goes to the one of the axis motors. So I think what I'm going to do is instead of putting it on the on the line itself, it appears that I can go around one of these posts on this motor here and do a little better job of uh, securing the hose without putting undue pressure on these wires so that's what i'm going to do going around the, the there's four posts on this little motor here and one of them is right above the plug that goes into the motor so i'm going to i'm going to use that one just to hold that cable that hose right there because i don't want to put any pressure on this cable from time to time have to pull my machine out to engrave tables and stuff so I want to make sure whatever I do with this I want to make sure that I can undo it from the from here and pull everything out to be able to move my machine still so that's one reason why I'm doing it this way And I may end up having to redo this. There is some potential for issues. I'm hoping it won't be. I'm hoping nothing's gonna get caught or snagged or anything, but the only way to find out is to try it. ducking back outside like it's supposed to to get out of the way. I did lose a little bit of space on the back end right here where this hose comes around, but I think that's, uh, I think it's acceptable. I really wish all of the wiring was up top. But I can't go inside there because the belt is just inside here. So that's gonna have to that's gonna have to suffice. So let me turn this thing on so you plug this back in and turn it on and see how it does.
That's actually a pretty good bit of air once it hits that nozzle. Mine is very tight, so. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it appears to be successful. I'm gonna uh, do a little cleaning and then we'll, uh, we'll test this thing out. Try to clean all of that. I get a lot of dust here, so I have to clean those uh, rails pretty regular. Because between the sawdust and the dust that the laser creates, it can get a little much at times. So I usually just take a rag and I use glass cleaner and just wet it with the glass cleaner. The uh, reason I use glass cleaner is it evaporates and it doesn't get down in here and and keep it wet, stay wet. If it does get a hold of any of the electrical components, it's less likely to hurt it. Uh, but just clean all those rails really good. I've already got the, the dust out of my, my unit there. And it'll take me a little of this and kind of put it on the rails All right, now for the test. Let me grab a piece of scrap. All right, guys, I got it, uh, got her all uh, ready to go. I missed a little dust right here, but it's on the surface. It's not like it's hurting anything. So now all we got left to do is focus, and we're ready to go to work. And what I'm going to do, I, I have been cutting this exact same wood. You can see I've cut stuff out of this piece already. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it on what I would normally use as far as my settings go, which is 7 millimeters per second at 100% power output. And I'm going to run it, but I'm going to watch the piece and see. Sometimes it'll fall out after three passes. Sometimes it takes the fourth pass for the piece to completely fall out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just run this like I normally would and see if it falls out any earlier and also I want to see what kind of uh, what kind of marking it leaves on the wood. I've already got some markings on the wood on this side from where I cut these out. So we'll be able to look at them side by side because I'm fixing to go and get within a half inch or so of those squares and do a cut see how it does. Yeah, I'm definitely going to need to hook mount my switch up. I'll do that here in a little bit. That's, that thing's louder than my vacuum table now. Vacuum table. There it is. Yeah, it's louder. So, I'm definitely going to hook that up to my switch so that it comes on when I turn my vacuum table on. And if I want to disable the air assist, I can flip the switch off to disable it. But that way I can keep just reaching down here and hitting the switch. So let me go ahead and draw me a square. I'm going to update my camera so I can see what we're working with here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the laser powered up. Select the appropriate time port and go ahead and try to hone it. 
see how it does on the home, even though I think it's going to hit the back a little early because of the way that this is ran. I mean, I may lose a millimeter or two of some workspace, but as long as it consistently goes to the same spot, I really don't care. All right. Update number way. Draw the box. I'm going to make a nice, cool, rounded corner box. match the ones that are already on the wood. And let's make it a little crazy. Let's, let's create some crazy shapes. Alright, so I got I got this cut in there and I will be running my power setting at seven speed, seven millimeters per second, 100% output. Uh, it's got an air assist switch, but that's not helping. And I will be running it with the air assist, but I'm still gonna run the four passes. And, I, and if I see it fall, I'll stop it. So we'll get this going. Go ahead and frame it. All right, that's close enough to the other burn that we can tell what's what and, and be able to see the scorching. So I'm going to go ahead and let that roll right there. Now turn it on. I will be wiring that into my switch. Okay, I will say this. <laughs> That is definitely making the cut look smaller. Okay, and the cover actually does protect you from the laser light once you get to cutting. So I'm glad I left it on there because it does actually appear to be hiding the uh, hiding the light a little bit behind the orange. So I'll be leaving that on. Okay, I've already decided that it definitely makes a difference. Uh, and the reason I know that is because when I first started to burn, I didn't turn the air assist on, and it went about three quarters of an inch before I cut it on. And standing back here and looking at it, you can definitely see a difference in the cut after I turned it on and before I turned it on. So I'm gonna do another demonstration in a minute. I'm gonna move the camera down a little closer so you guys can see it. And I think what I want to do is I want to do a circle inside a circle and I'm going to have it cut the inside circle first and then cut the outside circle. And, and that way you can have it all in one image and see the difference. Uh, it, it's definitely an upgrade. Uh, so I, I will say that. And I don't seem to have any air leaks. Everything seems to be working fine. Uh, like I said, I did use enough of the tape to where the cone barely would slide onto the piece to try to get a complete seal right there on those pieces. Because if you don't use enough of the tape, I've seen some people say that they don't get any air out of it or whatever, but if you don't use enough of that tape and you don't get a, a seal in that gap between the tape and, and that cone, the air is going to come out there and blow back up through the laser. And to me, that would cause a problem especially with uh dirtying up the lens or or whatever because the way this is at right now it's already it's already cut through i can see smoke coming out from under my my piece into my vacuum table so it's already it's already making it through and this is four 
four passes and if you can see these pieces on the back right here this particular piece of plywood was a little harder than normal and i ran some quick burns with it yesterday and i had a little splintering there's actually a a, a crack right there that they filled with some kind of glue and when they did that it uh it made it really hard to cut through there but i don't know i can see the light through the cut now as it's coming around so it's it's it is completely cut through this end for sure and this is 4.5 millimeter luon aka underlayment that you get at the big box stores that's that's all i use i, I can't afford for what I do, I can't afford. I would rather spend less money and have a few pieces of wood I couldn't use than to have to pay for that, the crap wood. But I can see the light reflecting back through the cut from the uh, from the base. So it has made it all the way through now. I just saw this end of it fall. The piece fell in the hole. So, so this end is definitely completely free. Okay, the rest of it just sat down. So, yeah, that's, it's still sticking a little bit on here, but this, like I said, this was a stubborn piece of plywood that I got. And so, but it is definitely a cleaner cut. While that finishes, I'm gonna go put my cleaning sprays up. Okay guys, I did a similar shape to what I did yesterday and I run the same power settings as what I did yesterday. And you can see these little these little frays here that, that hang on, hung on. And you can also see the, there, there is a little more charring and I don't, mine's never had a big problem with charring. I think it's because of my vacuum table and the way it works. Because once I punch a hole through a piece of wood, my vacuum table actually pulls the smoke through the cut. So kind of the same principle as an air assist, it blows down through the cut and the vacuum table kind of creates a downdraft which pulls it through so so this is a you know this is the the wood that i just cut compared to the edge of the cuttings from yesterday so there definitely was more charring and a little more smoke residue left on the wood and it's a lot cleaner cut i will say that too and there really isn't any dust in the uh any soot in the cut so yeah that's uh, definitely an improvement and what I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna try to get the camera as close as I can. I'm gonna put you guys over in here and I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a couple more circles and stuff here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do either one of the circles with, with, out, with or without or do like half and half, but I'm gonna give you a with air assist and a without air assist to kind of look at. Like I said, I, I've never had one. This is literally, y'all have seen me unbox it and put it on, so. I'm pleased so far, and uh, but I want to make sure that everybody, before you make a decision on buying it, I mean, you can see the results for yourself because it's it's it is definitely an improvement. At this point, I can honestly say I'm pleased with my purchase. So stick around for just a minute. I'm gonna move the camera and try to get you over in there where you can see what's going on. Right, I'm gonna frame this out, 
and I'm going to start it. I am not going to turn the air assist on. I'll show my air assist little switch right here. I'm going to turn the air assist on once it gets 50% of the circle done, and then I'm going to cut it off at 100, and then back on at 150, off at 200, and, it, and so forth and so on until it does four cuts. So here we go. So I'm going to leave the air assist off until the bottom. And right about now, turning the air assist, or turning the air assist off. So off is going to be on the right, on is going to be on the left. All right. Turn it back on. I can already see daylight popping up through the hole. So it's already punched a hole through there. Now I don't know that it's a you know a good enough hole to, to make that piece come out, but we'll we'll play with that in a minute. Turn it off. Gotta wait a little late on that guys, my bad. I've still got a good quarter of it over there that's with it off though. Back on. And I can see the reflection of the light coming out of the hole. I don't know if you can. So it's it's cut through there. Off. Air assist on. Off. This should be the last rotation. Okay, I just saw it fall on the left side. And that side fell, but not quite all the way. So, so let's see what this did. So, you can see let me get something smaller. You can see the uh, soot around through here. This is the I, I did forget to leave it on one time. We're coming through here, so we'll we're gonna we're gonna go ahead. I'll mark it. This right here is where I was turning it on and off, and then right right here was the highest I let it go when it was on. So from 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 here to here, that is without air assist, and you see the yellow one, and then this side here. Was, was with air assist so my machine's never really been bad to char but what little bit of char i did have on cutting anyway it, it seems to have uh, gotten rid of it so now what i want to do is i want to do a a, a a test on how many passes it takes me now to cut this board so i'm going to set something up for that all right guys i got me four circles set up for a cut test and the plan here is that I am going to uh, see, I've got the, the first cut to your left is going to be a one pass. And then the, the next one will be two and then three and then four. It's a pretty simple system. Uh, and I just want to see, typically it takes me four passes to cut this stuff. And I want to see if this thing has actually uh, helped me out on that. So. I'm right now just trying to get it home where I can be, you know, save some of this for the rest of the demonstrations. But I've got the air assist off right now. And I'm going to turn it on. And I'm going to go ahead and run this. And we're going to see if the pieces come out with one, two, three, or four passes. So here we go. The first circle is going to be one pass. And then two, three, four, you get it. And this is at 100% power output at seven millimeters per second, constant power in line mode on uh, flat burn. Okay, so it skipped from number one to number four. I didn't set the priority on the cuts. My bad. So this one here should be. Uh, no, this is going to be three. This one's going to be three turns right here. This is not the fourth one. The fourth one's going to be on over. So this is going to be three evolutions here.
and I can see daylight now, so. I don't know that it's able to fall out, but I can see daylight under it already. And it fell. So that one fell on the third pass. I suspect that three cuts is still gonna be required to cut through this. Like I said, this is 4.5 millimeter. This isn't any of the three millimeter or, you know, millimeter and a half. I mean, this is, this is 4.5 millimeter Luan that everybody says doesn't cut good, so. So that's two cuts. So it looks like three is the winner. And I know very well that it's gonna fall on, on, uh, at least by four. But it should it should fall, according to what I'm seeing so far, it should fall on the third rotation. That's one rotation and I'm already seeing some reflection from my, uh, my under piece, my, my metal underneath the bottom. I'm already seeing the light reflecting back up. So it's pushing through it pretty quick. Should be falling here in a second if it holds with what the other one did. All right, there it went. It fell. I don't know if y'all can see that. So it falls on three instead of having to have the fourth. So that's a, that's an improvement. I mean, I'm not going to call it miraculous, but it is definitely an improvement over what I'm used to. Uh, now, I'll be shocked if that number two piece is actually loose. So there's there's four, that's three, and that's two. Let's see if the second one, let's see if it came through. Oh, and we got a bonus. That was actually a knotty piece of this wood. That's why I, that's why I didn't use it the other day. Uh, but as you can see, this is three passes, because I flipped the board over. Don't let me lose you here. This is three passes. That's four passes. This is two passes. Uh, now, technically, with a little bit of scoring, try not to cut myself on camera, guys. should be able to pop that out so there you have it if this had not been four and a half millimeter and maybe even if it hadn't had a knot right here close to it that I mean if, if I had a if I had a cut come out like that I wouldn't be heartbroken unless it was something really intricate the small intricate stuff you do not want to have to score but if this was a jig or you know just a box or something I wouldn't be too stressed about it but I, I will say that I will be changing my settings to three for my cuts now because obviously three is going to do it. So it, it has saved me one rotation. All right, guys, now for, uh, for the last test. And for the last test, I want to do an engrave because I've heard mixed mixed thoughts on does it help with engraving or does it not and i've pondered the question so i'm sure some of you have too and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do two identical circles and i'm going to put them as close as i can get them together without touching and we're going to burn those guys one with air assist and one without air assist running the exact same settings so the first one, I'm gonna let it go without air assist. And then once it moves over to do the second one, I'm gonna turn the air assist on. So here we go. And I'm gonna need to turn my table on for this cause it's gonna get smoky.
You like how that smoke's being pulled straight out of there, don't you? Vacuum table. And for those of y'all that are asking yourself right now, how in the world is he getting that black finish on that wood? Did he use borax or did he use this or did he use that? Okay, going on with the air assist. The question to that is, I used absolutely nothing. Uh, that's, this is poplar underlayment boards that I get from a uh, local hardware store and it burns really well. Like I said, sometimes the cuts can be a little tricky, but I've made, I, I make more than my $30 that I spend on a 4x8 sheet of this stuff. I can make that, I make $30 back on one 16x16 16 square. So, this is what I buy, and it works good for me. So, this, this bird here is exact same power setting, and I'm running 70% power, or 70 speed at 100% power, and both of these are the exact same power setting, so. I'm just gonna see if it makes a difference. I, I don't know that it's gonna make a difference on, on engraving, but while we're here, we'll check it and see. guess it actually may be a little darker but it's not enough to call it I, I think it actually let's see yeah yeah and that's my old my eyes are just getting that old maybe maybe I just got you know my old eyes are messing with me but I think I see a little more gold and bronze color in this and a little more black in that and I don't know how well that's going to carry over the camera but but this this looks a little blacker that looks more a little, a little more bronze this one has a lot of more little pieces coming off of it so I guess it actually dug in there a little deeper and that may be why so but yeah like I said I, I really wasn't counting on it to do anything for my engraving I'm happy with my engraving already as you can see even without air assist I don't get a whole lot of charring with, with engraving uh cutting was my my big thing so uh yeah there you have it guys all right guys i hope this was helpful for those of you to try to decide whether to get the air assist or not like i said i was a i was a little skeptical i was a little concerned uh i i, I wasn't really a fan of the tape uh, but like i said i'm a fan of what works so the tape was a bit of a drawback. Uh, I will say when you're putting that on there, try to get just enough tape to where it goes on snugly, but not, eh, did I mess that up? Snugly, but not enough to where you have to hammer that thing on there. And you want to get it as tight as you can to try to seal that thing up. Uh, one thing that I did do, and, and, and I think maybe this, this might actually help a little bit, is on the bottom end where it goes into the laser, I had a little bit of a, little bit of an overlap with the with the base 
and it kind of curled up a little bit. So when I pushed that thing on there, it kind of had something to push against on the back side as well. And I'll have to go back and look and see if everybody else is trimming the, uh, the, the excess tape away from the top of the laser head. But that was something that, you know, just from my understanding of mechanics and, and working on things pretty much my entire life, that just looked like that could lead to problems, whether by you know getting clogged up with dust and causing an obstruction to the laser or actually getting over in the way of the laser and causing some problems that way. So I just went ahead, took the X-Acto knife or the, the utility knife and cut, cut it right below the tip of the brass so that I know that none of that tape is gonna get out there in the way of the laser. Other than that, uh, everything went pretty well, pretty, uh, pretty simple. I, I like the way I've got my, my hose ran now, and as long as it doesn't give me any problems with hanging up or anything like that, I'm probably gonna leave it that way. I've seen some other people that had it just like hanging and it, it, it looked like R2-D2 got hit by a truck, and I just, I really don't like that look. Uh, I'm a little OCD, I like things organized. I can still unsnap the hose from the pump and move my machine and it is still just as portable as it was before. I'll just have to leave that hose dangling. And so, because I, I do do tables or stovetop covers and stuff like that and I actually like to take the machine out and set it on top of them because they won't fit in my vacuum table. So, but all in all, I'm gonna have to say that, that I like it. I think it's uh, a decent investment. I know there's some other options out there and I'm not, I'm not down in them by any means. Uh, I haven't had one of those to try. I bought this one from X-Tool because X-Tool made the machine. I figured they knew what they were doing and I would give them a shot on this one. So if, uh, if you want my opinion, is it worth the investment? I'm gonna have to say yes at this point. And if you want my opinion on the honeycomb, I'm gonna have to say you're gonna have to wait till it gets here. Uh, till then, I'll still be using my hardware cloth on my vacuum table. Uh, once the honeycomb does get here, I'm gonna have to retrofit the vacuum table to accept it and may have to make some slight modifications to my jig holder. And for those of you that have my jigs that, uh, and, and have a honeycomb, if there's any issues that you haven't resolved yourself, hopefully I'll have a, a resolution for that coming out as soon as I can get the honeycomb here. But that's it for today, guys. I, I got a couple of jobs. I got to do some keychains that, that came in today. So I've got to build a graphic and burn a few keychains tonight before I can go to sleep. So I'm gonna get this wrapped up so I can go ahead and get the editing done and get it on the YouTube for you guys. But just make sure you hit the subscribe button. Uh, give me a like, thumbs up, thumbs down if you don't like it, whatever. Uh, just, just let me know you care, let me know you saw it, and we'll go on from there. So have a good day and thanks for stopping by.